Trekking through the Sui River Forest Reserve in Ghana is tough going, but these conservationists are on a mission. Researcher Gilbert Adam is here with some American colleagues on a quest to find a particular species of frog, which he first discovered a few years ago. Not this one, but the giant squeaker frog. Hey, Gilbert, I found a frog! It's oh. thought there are only about 30 of them left. I have to be careful here. Have we seen this frog today? No, that's lovely. Well, the same genus, but another tra a tra left is a different one, but it's a forest mm. one. It's a good find, it's a great find. We spend sometimes a whole week or two weeks every month here looking for it. For instance, we started from June and it was not until the beginning of this month, so it took four months and then we found one here. Adam has devoted his career to the giant squeaker frog. His work on its behalf has sent him to distant countries. Quick! 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 That is the sound of the giant squeaker frog. I love frogs and this love for frogs brought me to Germany, brought me to Berlin. To be precise, to the city's Natural History Museum, where Adam spent 18 months conducting research. The museum has a collection of West African amphibians, and the Ghanaian biologist also learned to use a geographic information system to produce maps. How are the giant squeaker frog and other frogs native to Ghana coping with climate change? Adam received a fellowship grant from the Humboldt Foundation to find out. My knowledge has improved drastically. There are about 80 frogs that occur in Ghana. Almost all of them, they have the specimens, and I've studied all of them. And now, with the maps that I've developed, I know where each frog occurs. So I've really benefited so much. I have never benefited from anything more than this uh, fellowship. Now Adam is back in Ghana, continuing his research in the Sui River Forest Reserve. This time, he doesn't manage to find a giant squeaker frog, but he does find a few pits left by illegal gold prospectors. And even for the tree frogs, they can also come out because they will need things like this. Or uh, they will struggle. And if there's a predator there, the frog will not be able to escape. The frog's natural habitat is also threatened by logging. Gilbert Adum shows his colleagues from the U.S. NGO Save the Frogs the damage that's been wreaked by the timber industry. Loggers are allowed to fell just three trees per hectare here. But in fact, they chop down a lot more, leaving devastated landscapes in their wake. It's, it's been a war for us. We cannot fight them. What we have been doing is to educate the local people that this forest is not for any timber company. It's not for the government. It's for the, the local people. The village of Yokrom is located on the edge of the reserve. If the Sui forest and the frogs that live in it are to survive, the inhabitants have to do their part. They depend on cocoa cultivation for their livelihoods and also on honey production. Just open the Here they're being taught how to build beehives and manage the bees. The project was initiated by the frog conservationists. In the past, locals harvested honey in the wild with fire, but would burn down trees in the process. The new beekeeping system is designed to protect the forest. Change is afoot in Yokrom. In another project, ground that was cleared to make way for farmland is being replanted. In just a few years, Gilbert Adam and his organization have managed to enlist the support of locals in protecting the forest. Initially, they didn't take his work seriously and didn't see the point of saving the frog and its habitat. But now they've helped plant 15,000 seedlings. The forest is so vast, so, so vast. And the, there are so many places degraded. See how far we came into the forest. 
and see the farms that have been made. And now the local people have agreed um, that they will work with us. We should do the planting in their, on their farms uh, so that later uh, the trees will take over. Today, the village of Yakram is welcoming the community chief. School children are reciting poems to mark the occasion. I'm here to recite a poem titled Types of Frogs. Types of Frogs. There are many different types of frogs. They use lungs. The to celebration be revolves the around the frogs legs. and the Why frog conservationists. And on tree leaves and on moist land. Thank you. Gilbert Adam is even awarded a special honor. I, Nana, Kwabina Bosompim, the first, I swear allegiance to you, Nananum, to help in the development of Yakrum. They've made me the chief of the environment, environmental chief. I've never heard of an environmental chief in Ghana or even West Africa. So I may be the first environmental chief across all of West Africa. And it's all because of nothing else but frogs and the giant squeaker frog in particular. The frog has become a symbol of the community's commitment to protecting their environment.